Hello everybody, welcome to another True Review. This is Quest of Dungeons on the Xbox One. Now Quest of Dungeons is going to divide opinion depending on which era of video gaming that you actually came from. If you were used to playing the old 8-bits and old 16-bit consoles, then this game is going to be right up your street with very familiar sprites and gameplay from that era of gaming. It's a single player game where you play as one of four heroes, the warrior, the mage, the shaman, or the assassin. All pretty stereotypical RPG kind of characters. There is also a fifth character which is unlockable once you've completed the game once, which is a necro dancer. Now each of these characters obviously plays differently from one another, with the warrior being close combat specialist with the most hit points and the mage for example being a long ranged combatant using his spells to try and survive and obviously has the lowest hit points. The shaman is a bit of a, a debuff kind of character while the assassin as you would imagine is typically a critical hit kind of character and attacks from afar. Now your choice of character is quite important because some of the characters are more powerful than others. For example, if you want the easiest time of the game, your assassin is the character of choice. His critical hits and the fact that he can attack at long range without using any mana makes him severely overpowered. A little bit probably unbalanced if I'm honest with you, compared to the other characters. So after you've chosen your character, you get shown a light hide cutscene where the other three jibe your character of choice into going into the seventh floor randomly generated dungeon. So with it being randomly generated as a lot of games are nowadays, you do get kind of a fresh experience every time you play with everything in a different place, so no two games will be exactly the same. Now the game is touted as a turn-based game. Now when I initially played this game, I was playing it all wrong. I was running around, for example, like the classic game Gauntlet, trying to kill creatures and such. But you have to learn that the game is kind of turn-based. The game will only move when you actually move or take an action. So in theory, you can really take your time with this and go step by step and it's what you really need to do especially on the harder difficult levels otherwise you'll get quickly overrun and killed very very quickly. The game's also roguelike so don't go getting attached to your characters anytime soon because once you're dead you are dead and you got to restart I mean even on a successful quest completion it's a restart as well as with most roguelike games. So once you're in the dungeon, your job is to get down to the 7th floor, but in order to do that you're going to have to battle through an awful lot of creatures and boss creatures and also complete some randomly generated quests as well. Quests are attained by quest glyphs which give you a random generated quest. Now that can either be to find an object which is on that floor of the dungeon or to vanquish a boss character. Now as these are generated on the fly, the boss or the object does not appear until you've actually obtained the quest. So you may have already explored the room. Only information you get about the quest is the general direction that it's in. Now other than the quest, there's various looting to be done. Loot's normally obtained from treasure chests, which are usually behind locked doors. There's four keys in general to collect, and the doors sometimes require one or two keys to get in there, but that's usually where you do get your better loot. You can also purchase loot from a shopkeeper as well, who again is randomly generated, so you may or may not appear on the floor. In terms of loot, there's various potions to be found, tones which learn your character new skills, there's of course armour as well which is split up into helmets, chest plates, trousers, rings. Inventory management is quite easy to do when the game clearly shows you when an item is better than the one you've already had equipped. The one thing I would say that is missing from the inventory management is an ability to sort items into similar kind of categories. Now how combat's handled in the game, it's handled by a series of dice rolls. You can see on the bottom of my screen during the course of the review there's various texts that appear. Now that's normally off by default, I've actually turned it on because I like to see the game number crunch and see what it's actually doing. So that is up to you whether you want that displayed on your screen or not. Melee characters simply move into the enemies to actually attack them while ranged characters are a little bit more complicated because you, have to, you can actually choose which target you want to fire a spell at or fire your bow at. But again it is all down to the number crunching really if, if your attack successful if it's a critical hit or if it misses entirely now graphically the game catches that 16-bit style perfectly each character is well defined there's very little animation just them bobbing up and down really and the same with the enemies each floor has a different tile set there is also two campaigns in the game as well and each of the dungeons does look completely different to one another and there is also a customizable mode as well which you can design your own dungeon you can choose the dimensions of the dungeon and also how many floors it has 
So musically you have several tracks playing throughout the game, it usually transitions when the floor changes and also at points of high tension when you encounter a boss. So overall we're going to give this game a solid 7 out of 10, it is a really good game especially once you get really into it, here at TrueTube we are playing the game still long after review and we will do so for quite a long time I imagine as the game does stay fresh with its randomly generated nature. Hope you enjoyed that review, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and do follow me on my social media pages, it does really help me build the channel and get these games to you as quickly as possible. So thank you for watching and thank you for your continued support.